Hi, this is Justin Paperni. In this video, we're going to talk about the various jobs in federal prisons so you can better prepare. So let me turn it over to, to Jeff. Quickly, Jeff, we filmed a video recently, The People You Meet in Prison. And in that video, I touched on my job in the kitchen and how some worked and right. some didn't. And both clients and some of our viewers asked about various jobs in prison. What did right. you do at Lompoc Federal Prison Camp? What was your job? Well, my job was the, they called it the camp clerk. Mm -hmm. And one of my responsibilities there was payroll. Mm -hmm. So I knew all of the jobs. I knew what they paid. I knew who did it. I knew what the qualifications were. And I knew uh, how they analyzed uh, who to place in various positions. So you were a clerk. Were you at, at Lompoc, did new prisoners get assigned to a specific job I asked because at Taft Federal Prison Camp, all new prisoners, if you were healthy, unless you got lucky, yes. were assigned to the kitchen for 120 for 120 days. Are new prisoners at Lompoc assigned to a certain position, or how did they assess what type of job you have? Um, well, the short answer is yes, but there are two things. Um, your PSR is an important uh, document. Um, they review that to determine suitability. Yeah. Uh, another thing that they did at Lompoc was that everybody was assigned to work in the barracks cleaning mm -hmm. uh, for the first several weeks. And um, the, the reason for that, I think you, they wanted to observe your character. And you know, if there were multiple jobs that fit your suitability, um, then they could watch you and determine among those jobs what, you know, what were you best suited for for them. Sure. Uh, they're the most concerned with getting things done. They had um, a couple of, uh, they had a ranch, they had uh, a farm, they had a dairy, um, and they had Unicorn. Sure. Um, and they also had grounds crews. They also had a crew that went to Vandenberg Air Force Base, things like that. So there were a number of things, that, a number of slots that they were responsible for filling. Um, and they had to, they had to keep the, the, the camp operating. And they used that on the uh, they do that on the back of the inmates. So what were some of the jobs that you saw at Taft? Well, mostly the new guys went to the kitchen, but inside of the kitchen, there's there's many jobs. You can work on the buffet line where every other day, three times a day, you're serving food. You could be a cook at 545 in the morning, which no one wants me to be cooking. <laughs> I assure you of that. Um, you could be what I did initially, which was pots and pans, and there's tables and floors, which is the best job in the kitchen. So most prisoners went to the kitchen. I should note, uh, there are jobs in prison where there's there's one longer term prisoner who oversees all of the jobs. So there right. might be one right. prisoner that oversees all of the jobs in is an or, all the orderly jobs. And in my case, I learned who was running the kitchen. And the day before I saw on the call out list, I was assigned to the kitchen. And I was told to go the next day and I'd be given the jobs. I went to him the night before and I said, hey, bud, I've been assigned to the kitchen. Give me the best of the worst. And he's like, yeah. you can be a baker. You can do pots and pans and whatever else on the, the buffet line. I said, I'll do the best of the worst, pots and pans, which I did the first 120 days of my term. And then after that, I got approval to transfer to be an orderly. And there are many jobs as, as an orderly. Jeff, what's interesting about jobs in prison, from my experience with some of our clients, is that some want to work as little as possible uh, and focus on their personal activities, preparing to come home. Some want to work all day, both because they might need the income, their various tiers or pay, grade, uh, pay grades in federal prison. Some want to work because it keeps them busy and not having to, they feel like they have a full time job and they're not really in prison. So, what was your experience in the job that you had? How much did you make? How many hours a day did it? Did it take you? Uh, give us your experience on that. Well, uh, you work very few hours. It's not like working on the outside. Um, you're paid a pittance. Uh, you're lucky if you make a dollar a day. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I mentioned the word suitability. Um, and you also uh, touched on the fact that you can change jobs. You can mm -hmm. put in, uh, make an application to change a job. If you find that the place you're working at is unsuitable or if you're around people who are a bad influence or, or you know, negative, sure. um, then you can try and get a different position within the camp. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the things that I did uh, to try and help people from my position as clerk. Um, you know, I, I let people know that um, if they wanted to change jobs to let me know and I could help them mm -hmm. work through it. Now, one of the most important things too, and this is something that we've, uh, a theme that we've had throughout, do not complain. Yeah. If you do not like your job, uh, approach your attempt to change it in a positive way. Right. It never helps to complain. I, I agree. I know that I encourage people to be proactive when they get there. Look, everything 
when I got to prison, Michael Santos said there are two things the people who work here in prison care about, security of the institution and keeping costs down. So oftentimes they'll assign you to a job based on or, or under the guise of security of the institution. So even though I approached my counselor and asked to be an orderly, she said, good chance. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. You're young. You're fit. I'm like, I'm not fit. But she said, you're young enough. You're going, you're going to the kitchen. But it doesn't change that if you surrender to prison, there could be some openings. So I encourage yes. people upon their surrender, walk around the first week because you're not going to get assigned. In some cases, it's two weeks. Sometimes it's three weeks. I've had a client go as long as a month because they were full without getting a job. Maybe recreation is for you. You're a lawyer. I know a lot of lawyers work in the library, helping prisoners with appeals and all that good stuff. There's gardening. There's horticulture. There's agriculture. There's right, working in right. the warehouse. It, Commissary, and, which is a great job and it pays you a lot of money. So you might get assigned to the kitchen, try to find the best of the worst in the kitchen, but yep. be proactive because some counselors will say, okay, there's an opening. Someone's getting transferred to RDAP or whatever. The job is the job is yours. And right. that's, that's awesome. Uh, I think that's now, terrific. You got to be proactive. Right. And there's, there's one other thing that we need to touch on and that's um, what I would call jobs in the hustle. Yep. Um, you know, you make, as I said, very little money. Uh, as a prisoner. Some people are there for a long time. Some people don't have family resources to send in money uh, and they need to make more money than they can working for the BOP uh, in order to sustain themselves so they can have uh, commissary privileges and things like that. Um, so people do things. Uh, you know, they'll uh, they'll do your laundry. They'll yeah. make your bed. They'll, you know, they'll. Uh, there are people that will cook food for you. There was a guy that made burritos who, yeah. uh, you know, saved my life. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, those types of jobs are are there. Um, they're not condoned. You have to be careful. Yeah. Um, but it is a way to make a lot more money than you would otherwise. So I that that's right. I encourage all white collar, I encourage everyone in prison to do their job, but there is outsourcing of jobs in prison. Someone will come, come to you and say, for a book of stamps or 20 bucks, I'll you know, send it to me through your wife's account or whatever, yeah. um, I'll do your job. And some of those guys won't actually do the job you think they're going to do. And I remember at Taft Federal Prison Camp, a white collar guy who, you know, of course wanted more halfway house time under the Second Chance Act. He wanted the more, he wanted more time, but he wasn't doing his job and the counselor noticed. She didn't say anything. Uh, she made a comment one time, it can be as filthy as you want here. I have a home to, to go home to. But this, uh, you know, hired someone to do his job. He wasn't, he wasn't doing it. And there can be some backlash from that from other prisoners if they think, you know, you're so lazy, you can't even do your job, which takes an hour or two hours a day. So I encourage everyone to do their job. Initially, you might not like that job. And to focus right. on, like I, I spoke with Lee Sprague, who's a client at uh, Lompoc, who just completed RDAP, and he was telling me about Unicor, and how there's five pay grades, and some guys are making $150 a month, but there are some benefits to Unicor, he told me, because you can, you know, there's restitution in prison, and they reset every six months how much you get on your books and how much they take, but if you work in Unicor, there can almost be no limit to how much you have in your in your commissary account, because they won't take more for restitution. So there's and there's pros and cons to every job that you have. And one, one other aspect sure. of Unicor is you can actually learn mm -hmm. a trade sure. that could be beneficial uh, for your transition out of prison. Uh, and that's, that's another consideration. Lastly, uh, you know, we're constantly getting emails from clients in prison. Chad Houston, I filmed a video of him a few weeks ago before he surrendered to Yankton. He sent me an email through Corelinks that said some prisoners are getting transferred around the country and they're working on paving jobs and they're making like 150 bucks a month. And it's good for some longer term prisoners to see various prisons, to get out, to contribute and to make that money. For me, as I close and I'll get your final thoughts, I was an orderly the last nine months. I did my job every day, but at Taft Camp, it was an hour a day. It left time to blog, to write, to exercise, to prepare to come home. I didn't want a job that would be eight hours just to keep my mind busy. I didn't want to do the out crew, which is a great job where you're out in the community. Maybe it sounds selfish. I wanted to work on myself and get home to close. Was your mindset you know, similar? I know you had wife and children and you had a lot going on. What was your mindset to close with your job? Well, uh, primarily it was to get through with uh, without getting any uh, any you know without getting into any trouble whatsoever. Yep. Uh, to uh, to have them see me as a model prisoner because the one thing I wanted to do was to get out as soon as I could. Sure. And if I was not cooperative, if I didn't do what they had asked me to do, um, and I lost good time or the you know the ability to go to a halfway house when 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 it was time. Um, that would have been horrible, and it would have been costly to my family and to uh, you know 
it, it just would have been wrong. Well, thank you very much for, for your insights. If anyone would like to learn more about life in prison or jobs in federal prison, click the link below to get a copy of uh, Lessons from Prison. And um, we'll do more videos on these subjects. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out uh, uh, to reach out to us. We'd love to help. Thank you again, Jeff. You're welcome. Thank you. You got it, bud.